Hello to my dragons, golden bears, and eagles. Today's activity is chalk. Lots you can do with chalk. Now we're gonna go over three games you can create at home. Let's talk about our goals for the day. We're gonna make sure that we're able to jump, hop, and use our creativity. We're gonna have some opportunities for you to change these games to suit the way you wanna play. So now we have our chalk. We're gonna go over our first game called hopscotch. Have we done that before? Sure we have. So now we're gonna teach you how to create your own and get excited about doing that in different shapes, sizes, number, your choice. So we're gonna make our first hopscotch. I chose the larger sticks. They're a little bit less likely to break, but if you get the smaller ones, that's okay too. Just be a little bit more gentle. Start your first square by making sure that it's large enough to fit both of your feet inside. This one looks good. Now, go ahead and make the rest of your hopscotch. You can follow my pattern or make any pattern of your liking. Next, go back through and put in the numbers. Make sure they're in order. All right, looks good. Our first hopscotch has numbers one through 10. Also, you can use any shapes or sizes you'd like. They don't have to be square. We have moons, suns, hearts, bunny rabbits, stars, diamonds, and triangles. Mix it up. Now let's learn how to play hopscotch. Remember to stand behind number one and throw your hacky sack to a number. Whatever number it lands on, you can't step on it. Remember you're hopping with one foot per square. When you reach the other side, turn around and come back. Stopping before the hacky sack, pick it up, Skip the same number and return. If you're playing with someone else, it's their turn. Remember, if the hacky sack lands on a line, you have to skip both numbers now. Remember to use your arms if you're making a big jump. On your way back, make sure to stop, pick up the hacky sack, skip both numbers again, and jump out. Remember, any time the hacky sack lands on the outside of the play area, bring it into the closest number, and continue playing. Our next game is going to be target practice. We're going to use our underhand throwing skill. We're starting with four to five rings, and then you're going to come back and number them with points. The center will be the largest, the outside will be worth less. When we get ready to throw underhand, touch the leg on the same side of the hacky sack and step back. You're going to swing your arm backwards and swing forward pointing your fingers to the target. Whatever circle it lands in, that is your point. Go back and try for throw number two. I almost got 10. Now remember, any time your hacky sack lands on a line, you have to move it to the lowest number. Now for game number three, we're gonna make a board game. So to make our game board, we're gonna start with our first square with the word start. From there, I'm gonna go through and make all the other squares and I'm gonna snake it around the whole driveway. You can use as many squares as you want with as many colors as you want. You can change the shape, just make sure that it makes sense. Here I go. Also, don't forget, it doesn't have to be PE activities, although I'd like you to use these squares to represent different exercises such as push-ups, sit-ups, jumping jacks, lunges, or anything else you could think of. You can also include math, addition, subtraction, multiplication, challenge yourself, and if you need other ideas, contact your teacher. When you're to the end, go ahead and mark it with the word end or finish. Here we go from start to finish. Looks good so far. Remember, it doesn't have to be perfect, just make sure it's fun. Now, what I found at the dollar store, interestingly, were these foam dice, or die, and they are dry erase. So if I have a dry erase marker, I can use it to mark on them so we can play our board game. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark the first one 
and I'm going to mark it with numbers. When I mark it, we're going to start with numbers one through six because our cube has how many sides? That's right, six sides. So we're going to go one. When you mark the numbers, they can go anywhere you like. Now, there's two ways to go ahead and go about your board game. If you would like, you can put activities or exercises on each square. So if somebody lands on a square, it'll show them what exercise to do. You can include push-ups, sit-ups, jumping jacks, or anything else you'd like to include. Or if you find a second cube, you can mark it with the exercises as well. So I'm gonna mark this one with exercises. Okay, so if you don't have any foam cubes to use, then we can actually take those out and use a sheet of paper. All you need after that is a pair of scissors and some scotch tape and something to mark with. So to start, I'm gonna go ahead and make like a big cross here on my sheet of paper. So if you don't have a ruler, you can use the edge of a phone. I'm gonna do it like this. So I went ahead and made one square. Now I'm gonna continue doing this until I have a cross. So I want one, two, three, four, straight up and down. And then from the second one, I'm gonna make one on the left and on the right. Great, so now I have my cross. It doesn't have to be perfect. You can correct it with the scissors. So now let's cut it out. So now I have my cross and we're gonna use the lines here to fold it. So as you can see, if I bring it together, it makes our cube or our dice. So we want it to look the same. So, but before you decide to tape it up, let's mark it with numbers first. So from this side, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over and mark the numbers. It doesn't matter where they go. Now you can turn it back over and we'll tape it up. Great, so now we can use it in the same way we did our other cube. So when we want to roll, we can do the same thing here. And I landed on three. Make a second one to include your exercises. Now to play your board game, you're gonna start behind the start, roll your die, whatever number it lands on, that's how many squares you move. You can hop, jump, or walk into your next square. Then roll your activity die and do that activity. I landed on jumping jacks. If you are only using one die, remember to go ahead and mark the squares with your chalk what exercise to do. Don't forget that if you're the first person to get to the end, you're the winner. Great job, Mr. Martinez. Okay, so let's say we don't have access to a driveway, walkway, or sidewalk. Or we just don't have any chalk. Well, there's something we can do we can make our board game here on just a regular sheet of paper. So you just need a sheet of paper and something to write with. If you are able to make your paper cubes, you can use them too. So let's go ahead and make our game board. You can get as creative as you want. You can color it when you're done and make it exciting. So let's go ahead and make a starting point. And I'm gonna go ahead and write the word start. And then from here, I can go in any direction I want and make my squares, or I can curve them any shape you like, as long as it makes sense. So I'm gonna make mine go this way. Or if I want, I can make a line. 
and then I can follow it. And now I can just put the dividing lines in between. I can mark this as the end. And now we can play our game. If you only have one cube, you can go ahead and mark each square. So let's say in, if I land in the first square, I do one push-up. If I land in the second square, I can do three sit-ups. Don't forget to add in squares that make you go backwards or return to the beginning if you land there. So let's say if I land here, I can say go back one square. So if I land there, I have to go back and do the three sit-ups all over again. You can do that just a few times through the board, or you can make one special square that forces you to go all the way back to the beginning to start over. And just like any other game board, whoever gets to the end first wins. So you can make your game board however you like. I obviously will prefer you do some exercises, something to keep you active and healthy. You can also change the subject. You can make the squares uh, into math problems. You can do addition or subtraction, or if you're older, you can practice your multiplication. And if you don't answer it correctly, then you have to go back one space. That's a little added challenge. Remember, you can make your own rules. It's your game board this time. All right, everyone, so we learned three games. We learned hopscotch, we learned target practice, as well as making our own game board outside all with the chalk. So wasn't that fun? So I hope you use the nice weather to get outside and play these games. Remember that if you don't have anything indoors, there are ways to do it outdoors like I just showed you. And if you haven't already, go and go back and see some of the old videos so you stay active and healthy and having fun. See you in the next one. Bye.